What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is season two. This is our Toilet Bowl quarter finals. So from our original bottom 12 teams, we are now to the top eight of those teams. It is the quest for the porcelain throne. It is the true porcelain tower, not that knockoff that is in the world of FFB app that you have to clear like 90 floors. This is the real legit thing, and this is what everybody came here to watch. Screw the playoffs. This is really where it's at, right? I mean, come on. Okay, so we have four best of threes for you guys today. We've got my team, the Demon Detectives, versus Pineapple Pizza, Mr. Aloha, coaching that team who recently came off a little bit of an upset win over Zathria and the Ghost Bloods. The second series we've got here is the Spaghetti Western, coached by Maverick versus All Smoked Up of the Gumi Gods. We've got Black Sheep Knights, coached by King Delita versus Jesus LBL and the Straw Hats. And finally, the Corpse Brigade, coached by Willie Goats versus Spike and Bebop's crew. Without further ado, let's jump into these series. The first series for you guys today, we've got Mr. Aloha of the Guild Dead Society, coach of Pineapple Pizza, versus myself of the Guild Thunder Gods, coach of Demon Detectives. And this is the only inter-division matchup that we've got for you today. We've got three Rundall versus Heinler, but this is two Rundalls going at each other because Mr. Aloha did pull off the upset in the last round. Earlier in the season, we played each other in a best of three. I ended up winning that series two to one. Thankfully to my lightning and garble just putting in a whole lot of work for me and pineapple pizza at that moment was running grace um, Eliza and Barrett to some success the first time he tried out Oren and Barrett in the first time uh, the first game And I kind of ran it over so I'm not entirely sure what I was expecting going into this series here I kind of thought he would bring the Eliza Barrett combo, but I know he likes running Glacella I know he likes running Oron so what he was exactly going to bring, I wasn't sure, but I figured, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I didn't put a whole lot of time into my team process. I said, hey, Lightning Garble Titus worked really well for me last time. Let's just run it back. So that was my thought process going into the game. Let's see what happened. Game number one of our series today, we've got Mr. Aloha rocking that Valade with his brand new 140. I know that this Valade is literally max reincarnation. So this is like the strongest Valade you can get. And he is also running Orin and Glacella Wazette. Like I said already, I'm running Titus, Lightning, and Garvel. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Looking at this positioning, it looks like both teams line up very, very close to each other on this Coastline 2 map. Keen Blood... Keen Blade, excuse me, immediately coming out from Glacella. I'm not sure if that's what you want on your very first action. I think you probably want to skew that just a little bit differently as Oron's going to get Bells online, walk forward, and that Starlight Elena TMR coming out from Blade to get that Dark Resistance up, and Lightning is going to walk forward. Holy shit, just absolutely destroy Mr. Aloha's team in about one second. I think Sand Rooster has the record for the fastest game throughout the series, and I said, hey, I'm going to try and take that record from you. I don't know if I actually pulled it off, but this game was about 40 seconds long, so I was very, very happy to win this game one. Jumping into game number two, I really did expect some sort of formation change to come out from Mr. Aloha. I couldn't imagine that he would run the same team in this position. Um, I'm not going to lie, this is not what I planned on doing in game one. I wanted to get my buffs off, but Lightning decided, who needs those effing buffs? I'm just going to destroy them all in one hit. So we'll see if anything goes differently in this game number two for the Toilet Bowl. Game number two for this series, we've still got the Valade rocking, and I see the exact same attack and magic stack coming out from Mr. Aloha. I did change my team slightly because I felt a little bad about how well it went in game one. I said, hey, I'm going to throw in Kane instead of Garvel and just see what happens here. Might try and run a Keen Blade strategy and see if that goes. But I look at this positioning. It is... It is slightly different from him. It looks like it's the same. It's actually not. He is slightly more backed up, so I'm not sure if I'll catch this AoE or not. But Glacial is going to go with the AoE buff, still get the bells from Oron. So he says, hey, it's just the positioning, man. Uh, also, he only took about 15 minutes to figure out a new team, so I figured he's going with the same thing. Dark Resistance coming out from the Starlight Elena TMR. Life Siphon 2 comes out. Some adjustments, though from Mr. Aloha running some missile resistance clearly as Taunting Blade comes out from Titus and I still haven't picked up a kill, but what can Kane do in this spot? Piercing Lance comes out, drops the Oron. This is still looking very, very good for me at this moment. However, Valade is alive. He's got full life. He's got heals. He's got a lot of shit going for him. And what is he going to go for here? He's going to channel a spell, but what is the spell going to be is the question. I lied. He's not channeling a spell. He just goes offensive Valade. He says, screw your damn heals. I'm here to bring the pain, baby. 
and he didn't bring quite enough pain. I think he's going to drop there. It's in 3v1 in my favor now, but Surefire Burst. Glacella says, don't worry, I'll take care of this. Drops the cane. Sentinel comes out from Titus as he cannot reach to do any damage. But with this elemental advantage, you have to imagine I'm going to win this Scourge almost 6k onto the Glacella, but Lightning is now out of AP, crucially. Glacella, Stunning Thrust, pretty decent damage. Titus, not the most... Um, a slash resistant actually i don't i think that might have been a pierce resist i don't know regardless attack comes out from lightning doesn't quite pick up the kill glacella can she take titus out here yes she can with the triple piercer a pierce resistant tank she actually ate through him fairly well but lightning says hey don't worry i got this takes her out with 1600 damage and I proceed in the toilet bowl with a clean 2-0 victory. Uh, GG's to Mr. Aloha. He's an awesome guy. I will be honest. Him and I put very, very little like <clears throat> thought process into our matchup this week. Excuse me. Um, I think we both went into it basically with the same vibe of like, hey, man, let's just let it all hang loose in the toilet bowl. Whatever, man. We'll see what happens. So GG's to him. He's an awesome guy. Had a fun uh, time just kind of chatting with him on Discord. It was a fun series, but we've got three more bangers for you guys today. Let's jump into series number two. Second series for today is between Maverick of the Guild of Vandals, coach of the Spaghetti Western versus All Smoked Up of the Guild Starnies, coach of the Gumi Gods. Looking at the point totals from these two teams, pretty close um, in comparison. One team with 17, one team with 14. Gumi Gods took an upset victory over me in the final week to prevent me from the playoffs, so he's a very strong team. Maverick was just this close to making playoffs, literally tied in points with Dr. Dickhead's team. So these are two really solid teams, and I think the matchup should be pretty exciting here. Taking a look at this, we've got the Skahal on Maverick's side, who obviously can bring a ton of pain. He's got a ton of really strong mages. However, one thing I'm going to shout out is Glacella's got her 140 now, so wouldn't be shocked to see Glacella come out. King Mont's got his 140. Those are some really strong options for him. On the right side for All Smoked Up with Gumi Gods, he's got that Slime, who can be an absolute pain in your ass. Sylvie is a beast at 100 cost. Sakura is sensational at 70. Would not be surprised to see any of those units come out. Let's jump into the series and see who won. Game number one of this series between Maverick and All Smoked Up, we've got the Liarte showing for Maverick. So probably running a 100 cost unit in this format. Um, oh, he's running Velis. Okay, so Liarte, Velis, Skahal. This is actually a team that I called out a long time ago that I said I wanted to see from Maverick. He finally brings it out. I don't think he's brought this out yet. I said that I thought this could be really good. We'll see if I'm right or wrong here. As this team comes out that I'm very familiar with, it kicked my ass in the final week of the regular season. It is the Sylvie, Sakura, and Slime team. But here, Velis goes, getting the haste up on Skahal and himself. And if you have a healer backing up Skahal, he can be an absolute pain to deal with. Accelerate coming out from Slime as Sakura's going to channel her own spell. Some bells coming on Liarte, so she's got tons of AP going. And both teams setting up quite nicely for this fight here. One thing I will shout out is that Sylvie can do a couple of really nice things to prevent magic damage, can get that spirit up on the team, as well as giving herself shell and re-raise. And here comes that double haste coming out from Bella. So the entire team, very speedy. And my question is, uh, how is this Liarte set up? Liarte is a very interesting unit in terms of what you turn on and off, what she can go for. Does she go for something like Mega Charge to drop unit resist? Does she go for Charm Charge to get a charm on the other team? We'll have to find out here as all attack resist up. Was that the King Montemar? I'm actually not sure what she just used there. Barrage comes out for 1400, not a ton of damage. So that is looks like how Liarte is set up here just for AoE damage. Debilitating counter though, good damage on the slime as he goes offensive. Zap, 4,700 damage onto the Skahal. Height based cure onto him, and I missed it. Did he go for the Zombie Re-Rays? I think he probably had to, right? But I didn't quite catch it. He's going to channel a spell. I imagine a Thundaga here, unless it's a Flare onto the Slime. But here comes Sylvie. Make a wish, getting that barrier onto Slime now. And Flare actually is probably going to be better here if that's the case, as it would break his barrier. So what's he going for here? He goes for the Thunder. Just straight up Thunder. And that is unfortunate because it was enough damage to kill him, but now with the barrier coming out from Sylvie, it's not that unfortunate. Velas comes out, drops a ton of damage for Sub-Zero, 6k. Barrage comes out as well, not a lot, but here comes the return for All Smoked Up. Here is him, his team going on the offensive. Debilitating counter though hurts a lot. That 50% counter rate is massive. Wow, Rebel Intention comes out, 
courage removal, but it doesn't freaking matter because Skahal's courage is absolutely busted and it defies the laws of physics. Thundergo Disposer comes out, also defies them. Their health bars just drop immediately. Sylvie is the only one alive. She's going to channel, which I imagine is a full life. Velus going to heal up his boy Skahal, take him back to full. And unfortunately, this full life goes on to Slime, which I don't think is what you want. Although Slime could go for a raise on his other allies, so maybe that is what you want. We'll have to find out here. Barrage comes out. Sylvie hangs on. Sylvie hangs on, which is pretty crucial. Slime, what do you got? Hustle Dance plus one. Healed to full. These heals on all Smoked Up's team are so hard to get through, but not when you have a unit like Skahal. He's about to drop a big old Thundaga. Uh, what? He just dropped regular Thundaga, not Thundaga Disposer. What? I, what? I'm so confused. Eternal Frost comes out. Good enough damage. Takes them both out. Sylvie does have the re-raise still online, but this team looking really strong for Maverick. And I'm just going to say, and I called this a long time ago, I would have liked to see this earlier. No, I'm just kidding. Seriously. Heck of a showcase by Maverick in game one here. Absolutely obliterating the comp that I couldn't beat. Um, yeah, GG's. Congrats to Maverick in game one. What is all smoked up? Have for an answer in game number two. Let's jump in and find out. Game number two between these two players. We've got literally the Halloween showing from Maverick and the Sakura still on the side of All Smoked Up. So it is a switch up coming out from Maverick's side. He does not stick with the same team and it's a switch up from All Smoked Up as well. He decides to bring the Hope and the Mod. I love seeing Hope come out in these matches. Not a unit that we see almost ever in PvP. So very, very fun to see here. And what's going to happen? Salir so buffs herself. She's going to walk forward. A big old Aroga drop from... Literally the Halloween, we've seen this strategy before. Zombie transformation comes out from Gargas. Honestly, I am shocked that he can't reach a wind lash. He's got so much range. I think Little Lila is standing in the one spot that he needed to stand to get that off. And that could end up being big here. So Sakura is going to drop a limit break. This should be a ton of damage. Is it enough to one shot is the question. It is. That is a shitload of damage. I think that was probably 9k. I had to do some math very quickly. Guard haste coming out from Hope. Honestly, probably not going to do a whole lot. Your tank is hasted up. That's all well and good. But Taunting Blade comes out. Damn, bringing the pain on Salir, though. That's actually very solid. And what does Salir go for? Is it an AoE? Yes, it is. Goes for Thundaga. 3568 on the Hope. Mont is going to drop. It is now a 2v2. Can Gargus double kill here? Magic Reflex from the Hope. Aroga Disperser kills the Sakura, so this is still an uphill climb for All Smoked Up, but is the Magic Reflex enough? enough? Can Hope take them out? Imperial Ga, that is a ton of damage, gets the double kill. The re-raise though, oh boy. Maverick might still win this. No, Hope is gonna lap because he didn't have to move. He goes again, Guiding Light for 10K. Hope, the most probably uh, underused unit in the game, just drops the hammer on him. Um, and brings it to a game three. That is very exciting. This is actually the first three game series that we've had in the toilet bowl to this point. So hats off to both of these players. Let's jump into the final game and to see who proceeds into the top four of our toilet bowl. Final game of this series, guys. We've got Mustadio coming along. I love the switch up from Maverick. Not sure what else he's bringing with him, but he's gone three different teams in all three different games. This is the spice you like to see in the toilet bowl and actually this is the third different team from all smoked up as well it is hope sakura slime this time instead of mont might be a good adjustment as mont didn't do a ton although he did do about 4k to salir so i say that i don't know if that's true sharpshoot coming out almost 3,000 onto the slime but i don't think that's what you want i think you want to get ap onto mistadio so this positioning might actually end up being pretty good for all smoked up here as glacial is going to get her war maidens buff online and move to the side can Hope reach an Imperilga here? Because he is channeling, I think this is a Guard Haste. I don't think he can reach the offensive version. And man, Slime's heal threshold is absolutely nuts. He goes for Hustle Dance plus one, and he was not very low at that time. Agrius walks up though, gets the limit break on all three. Can she land a Confusion on anybody? If she does, this could be absolutely massive. She lands it on just the Slime. The other two do not get confused. I think they probably have some confusion resist in their kit as the standard attack from Estadio says, don't worry, Slime, I'll help you out. I'll get you right situated so you're not confused anymore. As Oldoa's TMR comes out from Glacella, defensive piercing rate and some AP as well. Hope probably going to go for damage here, though. Is this Imperilga? Rebel Intentions going to nuke Agrius. She might have been an effective magic tank way back in the day. 
but Sakura doesn't give a shit. She's just going to obliterate and does all smoked up pull off the upset in a comeback here. We'll have to find out. Fissure misses. It was targeting the Agrius. Seal Evil lands the Petrify on the slime. That is as good as a kill. Petrify is essentially a one-shot kill in this format. Holy shit, I have never seen Petrify in an actual PvP game. That is amazing. I don't think the chances of that are very high, so the fact they land that is absolutely nuts. Rending Bright Blade comes out, 4300, it breaks barriers. Comet with the follow-up, non-elemental though, not going to chain, only 2500 damage. Mustadio, can you get enough AP to petrify another person? Or can Glacella bring the pain? Armor Piercer comes out, enough to kill Hope. He is going to drop, there's a petrified slime there. Sakura, what can you do? Because you are now in essentially in a 1v2. Can she find the AoE? No, she can't. Rebel Intention onto the Mustadio. Going to get the kill. Who's going to go next? It's going to be Glacella. And I imagine she is able to find this. Yes, she is. Javelin Claw for 4,200 damage. And Maverick with Mustadio. His uh, home screen unit on his original like team roster sheet with the Petrify. The Clutch Petrify. Because if he doesn't get that, Slime probably just like ends up healing up his team and stuff like that. And I'm sure All Smoked Up wins that. That was a heck of a game three. Congratulations to him. Um, so we've got a Heinler team in the top four, and I will be facing his team next week. I'm not looking forward to that, by the way. I do not think his team is a good matchup for me, but we'll have to find out and see what happens. But let's take a look at the other side of the bracket and see who comes out of that. Third matchup for you guys today is between none other than Spike of the Guild Thunder Gods, the Guild Leader of Thunder Gods, coach of Bebop's crew versus Willy Goats of Guild Solaris, coach of the Corpse Brigade, the Final Fantasy Tactics master himself. And we got two really evenly uh, leveled teams here. Both teams had 14 points throughout the regular season, using very different comps from each other. Spike has that little Leela, that 140 little Leela is so damn strong and oppressive. Luel is an absolute monster with an 8-2 record over the regular season. He loves his Earth units. He also loves using that Celis to try and get some runic abilities up as well. Doubt we will see that though, as there's not a ton of magic threat coming out from Willy's side unless he's running Dark Fina, which he hasn't run a lot. Mostly, he has leaned towards those Final Fantasy Tactics units and the Warrior of Light. Does he go back to that again for this series though, or does he change it up and go a little spicy in the toilet? Let's find out. Game number one between these two players, we've got Willy Goats on the left, Spike on the right, covering the Warrior of Light for Willy Goats' side, and obviously, that super strong SR Little Leela on the right. And uh, just a reminder, in the Toilet Bowl, you are allowed to reincarnate. Whether or not Spike has done that on Little Leela, I am not entirely sure though. We'll have to find out. So this is an interesting team. This is a team that Willy Goats brought out in the very final week against Sand Rooster. It was very tanky and very hard to get rid of. And it is somewhat of 80 with the Ketone, but I will say I have seen this Luel before from Spike, and he builds her so damn accurately. She hits pretty much any evasion unit possible. She's going to pop the Pissarro TMR as Drain Glyph. I think that is the Urel TMR uh, running on Gafgarin here. So very cool tech here, trying to go with more and more Drain Force on the team. I will say, though, he missed the Ketone on the buff. I think he probably wanted that on her to make sure Drain Force hit, uh, heals for even more. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I think it stacks. But Utsusemi Shadow comes out from Ketone, so she's going to be super dodgy as well, well as getting that Missile Resist up and Earthen Evocation from Luel. So she doesn't catch an AoE buff, but she's online essentially. And Oberon is actually just going to refresh the AoE Purple Dragon Providence buff. I'm not entirely sure that's what uh, Spike wanted to see, but here's the Drain Glyph refresh. So now Ketone has it as well. The entire team's got the all of this. Invincible Shield comes up, and this is what we saw in the final week. I didn't know this was even something you could do with Warrior of Light, but you can literally shield other people with that move, which is just absolutely crazy. Not only is he a super good tank, he literally fills like an extra support role by making other people tankier, which is really cool. Mind Fortress from the Little Leela, and Oberon should be able to finally get in the fight. No, not quite. He's going to channel his barrier here. Devitalizing Glint is going to drop healing power, though, which is kind of massive because I imagine this is a Drain Force Keto. I can't imagine it's not with that Drain Glyph TMR coming out from Gafgarian. And here it is, Drain Force 4421. She still heals for 3700 though. So even with that healing power down with that TMR from Urel, she's healing very, very nicely right now still. Discipline comes out from Gafgarian, getting unit attack resist up and some attack up. But Warrior of Light needs to get in this fight. 
Ketone, even though she is bulky and has a lot of lifesteal, Warrior of Light needs to tank this up. And yeah, I think Oberon's just going to drop her before Warrior of Light gets in position. This could be pretty rough. Silencing Spell comes out from Little Leela. Very little damage, though. And there are no mages on Willy Goats' team. But there it is. Ketone's going to drop. It is now a 3v2. And this is going to look much harder for Willy now. I'm not sure he's going to have the damage to get through them. Gaffgarian can deal some punishment. Abyssal Blade Dark, though, only 2300 is not what you want to see. I think you want to see more damage than that. Holy Bravery, a nice little slash chain, but this little Leela just soaking hits like crazy. The Limit Break comes out from Oberon, 8 Path Dragon Shine. He is going to drop a freaking Spirit Bomb on everybody, and that is a lot of damage, and dropping the Elemental Resist with that Healing Power down too. I don't even remember when the healing power down came out, but that only healed for like 2,000, which is not a lot. Gift of Knowledge. Oh man, teaching these people how to die right now. Warrior of Light is the only one still left alive in a 1v3, and Warrior of Light's a good unit, but I don't see this, guys. Oh, Silencing Spell also drops healing power. I don't know why I didn't catch that. If that move wasn't already just ridiculously strong enough, also dropping healing power is kind of insane versus Willy's team here because he's very reliant on that. So Shining Sword comes out, can't quite pick up the kill on little Leela. Going to pop regen, but I'm pretty sure Luel's going to finish this off right here. She's going to drop the Esper, the uh, Ramu Esper Judgment Bolt, a very cool animation that we do not get to see very often. The lightning, literal lightning god, Ramu dropping about 3k onto Willy Goats' Warrior of Light's head. And that is a quick one, not quick, it actually took a little while. <laughs> that was a 3-0 uh, game one victory um, for Spike here. As the Discord message pops up, Willy Goat says, well played, sir. But let's see if he can play it well in game two with some sort of adjustment. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, game number two between Spike and Willy Goats. Willy Goats is toilet bowl hopes on the line here. What kind of switch up does he have? I just realized I didn't click play yet, and Delita is hovered on the front home screen here. So this is very clearly a switch up from Willy Goats. He is not running that same team. Is he going full Final Fantasy Tactics? No, he is not. Not full Final Fantasy Tactics. He's going Evasion, though. We have seen this Evasion team come out from Willy so many times. But I'm going to shout this out again. This is the Oberon Luel comp from Spike. And one thing I'll say is Spike almost always changes his team comps up. He must realize that this team has a good chance against anything that Willy can bring. I have seen this from Spike before. It is so damn accurate. I will be impressed if Willy Goats can dodge stuff here. We'll have to see what happens. So the Illusion buff comes out. The Lock Team R comes up. All the Evasion goodies that Willy Goats wants to try and get online. As Oberon's going to get that AoE resist up on the party. And Unit Attack resist up from Well, That is one reason why this combination is so damn strong. Because between those two buffs, you literally are just mitigating any kind of damage that comes in. Unit or AoE. Mastadio, what is he going to go for? He goes for Safeguard Plus. Getting his range up a little bit the accuracy probably not really going to matter but the range is nice illusion refresh on knight of rune stern also getting some aoe resist up crush accessory plus 2284 one thing i will say this might be kind of nice for willy because luel and oberon are pretty far away right now that being said oberon is kind of a dragoon he can scale walls pretty well and enter the fight and i say that this is pissarro tmr getting movement up I'm sorry, it's not movement up. I was thinking of Dragoon's Pride, uh, Kane's TMR. It's just haste and hate down. So she's still going to take a little while to get to the fight. What can Knight of Runestorm do? Hazard Render, 4,000. You'd probably like to see just a little more damage than that if possible, though. Cleansing Strike coming out from Willy Goats. That is a kill. The Doom lands. The Doom didn't matter. She is insta-dead. Thunder Smite comes out, though. And oh my goodness. That guaranteed hit from Oberon hits so damn hard. And this is the problem. We saw Oberon coming out from, I think, Machen X against Willy Goats this season, and the Thunder Smite was really impressive against Willy's team because Thunder Smite is guaranteed hit and breaks barriers. Speaking of breaking barriers, Runestern does that to Oberon, but Law of Geoabsorption comes out. It kills the Mistadio. It hits the one-hit shield on Knight of Runestern, and you have to imagine this is a big old Thunder Smite coming out from Spike. No, it's not. He goes for Royal Rend. What? what? I am shocked. Knight of Runestorm only has 7 AP, though. If he was able to find a Hazard Render, maybe he could have started to chunk into them a bit. But Luelle just goes for the little bit of a paper cut from her book. And Spike is going to move on to the top four. The upset, the seven seed beating the six seed here in this matchup. So now going into the final four, we've got two Heinler teams and one Rundall team. 
with one series to go. But GG's to Willie Goats. Thank you so much for playing this season. You did awesome, man. Excited to see you in season three. Let's check out the final series of our quarterfinals for the Toyota Bowl. Final series of our quarterfinals is Jesus LBL of the guild Get Swifty, coach of the Straw Hats, versus King Delita of the guild Hokuten, coach of Black Sheep Knights. And looking at the point totals here, you would definitely say that Jesus LBL has the advantage. However, I will have said this before a few different times, and I'm going to shout out again, King Delita kind of king of the upset. I mean, he uh, almost upset Coppola. He ended up taking a game off of him. He ended up winning the series versus Machen X. He took a game off of me. I mean, he took some games off of some of those teams that had a lot of points in our division this season. So he is no pushover. He's got some really solid units and I expect a very good fight out of him in this series. So for Jesus LBL, he's got a couple of different teams that he likes to go, essentially three comps. He's got his Evasion comp with Starlight Elena and Lock. He's got his Wind comp with Sadly Cyril Yuna, and he's got his Water comp with Titus Rechez and Yuna. Those three teams have worked very, very well for him throughout the season, getting him 17 points. And on the right side for Black Sheep Knights, he's got his main carry, that Glacial of Flagbearer. King of Leonis Mont now has his 140, is very, very impressive. When he feels spicy, he can bust out that Varouche. And I will say, Renan, now with his 140, I'm curious, is he 140? Is he reincarnated? Would love to see some Renan action here. What do these two teams decide to bring out? Let's check out this final season series of the quarterfinals. All right, guys, our final series of the day, and who is going to make it into that top four? Will it be Jesus LBL, the third Heinler team to make the top four, or will King Delita pull off the upset here and join me as the other Rundall team in the top four? We'll have to find out here. So Jesus LBL rocking that Titus with 1980 attack, 2600 magic stat. You have to imagine this is this double water comp that we've seen from him before as the Glacial of Flag Bearer for King Delita's side. So what else is joining her? Is it King Mont? Is it Renan? What are we looking at? Terra is the option that comes with it. Terra and uh, Vadim comes with the Glacial of Flag Bearer. So let's see it. Let's see what we've got here. So I imagine this is a Hastiga channel coming out from the Titus as Glacial Flybear is going to walk up, get her AoE buff that gives herself that free hit shield, which is very, very nice. And speaking of a shield, 7,500 magic health shield going to be on the Rechez, which is going to be very effective against that Terra. Not only does she have the elemental advantage, but the magic bear are going to be pretty damn solid. This initial turn rotation from Jesus, I will say um, just slightly probably out of whack in terms of what he wanted. I'm sure he probably wanted to land that three-man Hastiga if he could, but that is easier said than done sometimes. It depends on the positioning. So re-raise from the Yuna going to land on the Titus. He's going to channel Hastiga again. He's going to get it off on time. So the one nice thing is this will be refreshed, which means haste will essentially last a little longer on Rachez than if he would have went for it for turn one. So one thing is that like if you don't have another really good buff you want to go for, if you want it to last longer into the fight, you can just essentially refresh it. The zombie re-raise Tamar comes out from Glacial Flagbearer though, so she's going to have to die twice. Keen Blade from Rachez. So even though she is a magic damage dealer, she gets to run that glinting armor TMR from King Rob. Very, very nice tech as AP is going to be on to Titus, so he's ready to rock and roll here. Nimble movement from Yuna. She's going to sit back, but she can move pretty much wherever the hell she wants to go. More barriers on everybody. glacial has got a barrier. Terra's got a barrier. rachel has got a barrier. Magic Buster, though, says, I don't give a shit about your barrier, lady. You're down to courage already. Vadim going to go dominate char dominate heart, though. Lands the charm. Rachez, oh boy. So this will be interesting to have to look at the turn order. Sphere Shot is going to take out Terra, so now it is a 3v2, but it's kind of a 3v2 in King Delita's favor if Glaciala doesn't screw it up. She doesn't. She is literally like big braiding this. She goes straight past the rate chest and just goes for Titus. This Glaciala, I swear, freaking cheat codes, man. Rate chest is going to walk back Water Gasaber. Oh my god. She just obliterates her own team. What the hell? Glacella doesn't go for an AoE. She just goes for the backline on Titus, but the double re-raise with the zombie mask and the re-raise from Yuna. Jackshot going to miss from Titus. So man, tons of damage coming out from the rage chest, but the double re-raise isn't enough. Sneak attack comes out from Vadim, and Vadim is hard carrying this fight. Rachez is still charmed. They haven't broke this charm yet. Yuna is just going to heal herself. Glacella, what do you have? Triple cross, finally finds the AoE, but now it's a good time for that. Yuna's going to drop and is now a 2v1. And oh my god, King Delita trying to come out and pull off this upset with this charm Vadim. We've seen it before. Preemptive revenge. 
the counter is dodged and Vadim says, what's up, baby? I'm 30 cost. I'm hard carrying this fight. GG's, man. Um, we saw Vadim just go absolutely nuts in one game versus Coppola earlier this season. Honestly, this might be even better. This might be the best Vadim showcase that we had all season. He was dodging everything. He got Rachez to absolutely obliterate her own team. Wow. GG's to King Delita. And he's now one game away from getting into the top four here. Can Jesus LBL bring this back, bring it to a game three? Let's see what he busts out for game two. Game number two between these two players, we got Jesus LBL's Cyrell on the left side and King Delita's Adelard on the right side as Jesus LBL shoots him a message, says, hey, good luck, have fun. Let's see what happens. Who's going to win this fight? Um, did I start this video a little too early? No, I didn't. We're about to get into it right now. Don't worry, folks. And uh, one thing I will say, I want to shout out, I think I've said this before, sometimes in the regular season, I watch the games in advance. I did not do this with the playoffs. I only knew, um, I mean, I knew who won with my series. Obviously, I watched my games ahead of time. I knew the Willy Goat series because he spoiled it in Discord, but these other two series, I don't know who's going to win, so this is actually super exciting for me. So Varouche is going to walk forward. Um, I think he used his barrier that also gives a regen. Renan is going to go for a channel, so this is the team coming out from King Delita. He completely switches it up, goes with his quote-unquote spicy team that he brought up against me. And the accuracy buff coming out from Jesus is Cyrell. So making sure that they're very accurate in case more evasion comes out from King Delita like that Vadim. And Lightning Blessing going to come out. So this is a three-hit shield on Renan. He can be pretty bulky. And I'm excited to see. I believe I saw that this was 140. What kind of damage can he bring out? Re-raise onto the Sodaly. And this comp is absolutely disgusting. We've seen this from Jesus before. It is literally a triple re-raise comp because Sodaly has re-raise, Yuna has re-raise, and he has Zombie Mask. Three different re-raises are just absolutely ridiculous. And now I say that, there's another re-raise for you because Varus just used his own. Renan's going to use the Pissarro TMR to get his hate down and haste up. And here is the Zombie Mask completing... I believe what is the trifecta of re-raises for Jesus. Double resist coming up, pierce and missile resist. Don't think that's really going to matter against this team comp. It is pretty much full magic damage. What can Renan go for? He's gonna go for the limit break right out the rip. Ful Fulgurus Thunderblast. I don't know how to say that word, but this animation is pretty sick. What kind of damage can he do? 4,000 onto the Sodaly. Honestly, I thought that was hitting Cyrell too. It only hit uh, Sodaly though. But another haste coming out from Adelard. So this is nice. Double haste onto King Delita's comp. But indoctrination, no confusion lands. That could be actually pretty massive here. Varush is channeling a spell. I'm actually surprised he's not going for a slash attack. What is he channeling? Bursting light. I didn't even realize he had Kododama sub. But he goes for it. He hits the Cyrell who has hate because of Sodaly's re-raise ability. This is so valuable. Twisting Dissipator. Oh my goodness. Almost drops Farouche in one hit. But Renan, can he find an AoE? He, he finds it on... Oh my god. Ball Lightning Blast just obliterates both Cyrell and Yuna. This is going to be double re-raise coming up here. Oh my god. That AoE is insane. Did, is that, that what got upgraded? I'm shocked that he could find that angle, but that's awesome ceiling thrust 7k from the Adelard. it is now a 3v2 in king delita's favor kenny punches ticket into the top four varush is going to go next gonna take out the unit with unavailable pain and now sadly is in a 1v3 but i will say if there was any unit on jesus's side in a 1v3 he wants it's probably him indoctrination comes out enough to kill varush but does not kill renan and varush has re-raise Indoctrination comes out, but I just don't see it, man. It's a 3v1 at this point. Renan's going to go Thunderbolt, 5491. Gets the counter cure, though. 4k healing. That could be pretty massive. Varush needs to take him out here. The, the casting time is too long. Indoctrination is going to come out. Oh, my God. That Will that counter cure end up mattering? I don't know. He would have had about like 2,000 health right now, which I have to think... I don't know. Ceiling Thrust has a shitload of damage from Adelard. That would have killed him and proc re-raise. Oh my gosh. Sadly's going to go for the limit break. This all comes down to whether this charm lands. Whether the auto cure happened or not, it's all about whether this charm lands. It does. This charm lands. Adelard's not going to be able to do damage to Sadly. He's just going to take him out. I think this is probably a cura. Adelard's probably just healing him. Here it is. Mend thy ways. Jesus picks up the game two win in a 1v3 comeback with his Sadly. And I'm going to say it. I don't think that counter cure mattered because I'm. Like, 99% sure that Sodaly still had re-raise. So I really don't think it would have mattered there. But, man, that was an insanely close game, too. 
I am super excited for game three, the final game of our week. Let's jump into it. All right, final game of this series, guys. We've got Jesus's Cyrell and King Delita's Agrius showing. So maybe trying to get that elemental advantage versus the win units that um, Jesus just brought out. Might be an interesting and good strategy here. Especially if she can land a Confusion or something, that can be really game-breaking. I mean, she has multiple different status effects. She also has Stop in her kit, so we'll have to see. But it is Agrius, Renan, and Adelard. So leaving the Varouche at home, I will say Varouche, I think if anything, her, his main issue last time was just the fact that he needed to use cast time. I think if Unav Unavailable Pain was off, maybe they would have won that fight if he didn't have the cast time and the auto cure and all that stuff. Anyway, Zombie Re-Raise comes out on Agrius, so he's going to have to die twice here. Adelard, she, he should go for a fast cast, I imagine. And this is probably the barrier coming up from Renan. Call of the Wild, again from Cyrell. This looks like probably the exact same turn rotation coming out from Jesus. I think he thinks this is probably just his best case scenario that he can bring out here. Fast Camps comes out onto the Agrius, so the tank is going to be speedy, going to walk forward. And here's one raise from re-raise from Yuna onto the Sadali. Sadali is going to take this and... Uh, no, she's not going to return the favor. He actually just used the elemental attack resist up. Now I'm not even certain. Did he even have re-raise on last fight? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, because I haven't seen him use it yet. I think I think he did last time because I think Cyrell had hate. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're in game three, not game two. As the Pissarro team are, comes out from Renan this time as well. Zombie transformation coming out from Yuna. So that is two re-raises at least on Jesus' side. Concentration, a very nice tech to get that agility up on the squad. And Adelard. Another haste on himself. So now the entire team. No, he's just going to fast cast Renan, who is already hasted. Interesting. So that is how the AI works. Even though he already has haste, he still goes for it because he wants to get that cast time reduction down on him. But Candace and Hugh comes out from Agrius. Can she land a big old confusion? Yes, she can. The big thing is, though, Renan, you don't want to screw this up. He, he's going to he's going to screw it up. Actually, no, I think this is the same position as last time. I think this is just hitting Sodaly. Just like last time, this might actually be good that he's not hitting Cyrell. I lied, he's hitting Cyrell. Um, that did about like 4k damage to both though, so maybe it's still worthwhile. Indoctrination comes out from Sodaly. Confusion lands on the Renan. Yuna probably going to go for a heal, I imagine. But Cyrell probably going to break this Confusion. Frost Axe breaks the Confusion and did honestly not take a ton of damage there. A big old cure from Yuna, though. And the damage from King Delita, is he going to have enough? Because that Frostbite from Cyrell is looking kind of massive right now. Adelard needs to follow this up real quick. Ceiling Thrust onto her. And what does Renan go for? He's going to find an AoE. He goes Ball Lightning Plus. Double kills the Yuna and the Sodaly. My god. The double re-raise, though, looking really massive here. It is now a 3v3 still with the double re-raise down. Sadali's going to go next. He's going to go for channeling a spell. And Yuna just going to channel another Kiriga, I think. Magic Reflex coming up from Adelard, though. This could actually be massive. Rush, not thy fate, comes out. And Adelard takes no damage. The heal is really big. Cyrell's going to go next. Twisting Dissipator. It still kills Adelard, though. So that Magic Reflex actually doesn't matter. But the re-raise comes up from Agrius. But honestly... Like, Renan basically has to double kill both uh, Sodaly and Yuna here. He almost can. Not quite. But Agrius goes next. If she can kill Sodaly here, King Delita might still be able to pull this off. This is a 2v1. The MR unit, Cyrell, with Jesus' uh, total bolt chances on the line here. Goes for Constricting Cleave. Takes out Renan. That is the threat. Renan is the one who's going to do all the damage. Agrius, even with the elemental advantage, there's just no way unless stun lands, it does not. Stun does not land. Jesus LBL with the early game one loss manages to pull off the reverse sweep here and wins the series. GG's. Honestly, um, I'm so glad I picked that one last. I literally was just, I think I went top to bottom um, in terms of like the bracket on the way it shows in the bracket. And this just happened to be, I think, probably the best series we had this today. So that is pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Um, GG's to both of these players. I mean, King Delita, absolutely awesome showcase, man. Thank you so much for playing this season. Looking forward to seeing you in season three. And we're going to have to take a look at the bracket because I'm pretty sure I'm the only Rundall team in the top four. So I'm Rundall's only hope. Let's take a look at that and uh, see what's going on there.
All right, guys, as I mentioned before, this is the bracket with the top four teams of our Toilet Bowl remaining. As you can see, I won the series 2-0 versus Pineapple Pizza, Maverick 1-2-1 versus the Gumi Gods, Straw Hats 1-2-1 versus Black Sheep Knights, and Bebop's Crew 1-2-0 versus Corpse Brigade. Entering the week, we had five Rundall teams and three Heinler teams. Entering next week, we still have those three Heinler teams, and I'm the only Rundall team left remaining. So for Rundall versus Heinler bragging rights, I've got a lot on my shoulders here. Hopefully I can pull it off, but honestly, I don't love the Spaghetti Western matchup next week. Uh, I think Maverick's team is really freaking good. I do enjoy the fact down here, a little bit of season one rematch going on between Jesus and Spike. I think that's a really hyped matchup as well. It should be a couple of really banger series next week. Um, one thing I'm not entirely sure if we're going to do, we basically left it up in the rules that whatever two teams make the grand finals, if they choose to play a best of five instead of a best of three, we are going to allow them to do that, but both teams have to choose to do that best of five. Um, I know if I make it, I'm going to vote for it because I think best of fives are fun, um, but I have to beat Maverick first, which is a very, very tall task. So we'll have to see what happens. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed this toilet bowl. I obviously understand it's not the playoffs, but I think it's still fun to do a little bracket style thing. It's always uh, exciting when it's like one and done. You know, you lose and you're out type of deal. Uh, puts a little more pressure on the situation. So very, very interesting. Um, two really awesome or four really awesome teams to, to end this in the toilet bowl. I'm looking forward to next week. Um, I'm not entirely sure when the playoff uh, quarterfinals video will come out yet. Not all of the matches are done yet for playoffs because they are all best of five. So the games take a little longer. So just bear with me. I am not, you know, like I'm not like losing interest or doing anything like that. If the video takes a little while to come out, it is literally because the games can take longer to finish because they are best of fives. And I am way more free on like Mondays than I am during the middle of the week. So it, there is a chance it could be near the end of this week when that video comes out. So if that is the case, I do apologize. I'll try and get it out as soon as I can. But we'll have to find out and uh, see what happens. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful day.